This is where our house used to be before the genocide. Nothing is left of it now. The killers bent it all down after looting it. Eric Mwezi was just three months old when his parents and four siblings were killed by Hutu militias. He's a survivor of the 1994 genocide in Rwanda, the fastest of the 20th century, during which close to a million Rwandans, mostly Tutsi, were wiped out in just 100 days. Eric was too young to remember his family dying, but he says he will never forget the day his aunt told him what happened. <laughs> She carried me on her back during the genocide, right up until the killing stopped. She told me how horrific it was. She witnessed it all. The rain was pouring down on us. Those were hard times. For many days, we would flee from the killers, and while we were fleeing, we would jump over dead bodies. Eric's dark family history is one shared by many. His relatives, like countless persecuted Tutsi across the country, had sought refuge in a church when they were killed. A church just like this one in Yamata, where an estimated 50,000 people died during the genocide. Today, this site stands as one of Rwanda's most poignant memorials, a disturbing reminder of what happened and physical evidence of crimes that should never be forgotten. You can't imagine how it feels like growing up knowing that you're all alone with no parents and no siblings, while other children your age have them. Eric says his generation's identity is deeply entrenched in the trauma of 1994. It's not only survivors who lost their families who are still processing the past, but also children of perpetrators who participated in the killings, like Irene Mizero. <laughs> It's very hard to find yourself all alone, either because your family members were killed for being Tutsi, or, as in my case, with parents who are in prison because they were convicted of participating in the genocide. As children, we had to take on a lot of responsibility from a young age. The genocide could cast a long, dark shadow over the lives of future generations. Yet, a belief in the power of reconciliation is ushering a new chapter in Rwanda's history. As the youth, we have to live in a way that brings us together to keep our country moving forward. The youth are the future of the country.